Okay. Hi, everybody. Thank you for being here with me live or later. I literally just got back from Hollywood Forever Cemetery because yesterday was Halloween, Samhain, um, but I was working. Um, and so in LA at Hollywood Forever Cemetery, there's always a Dia de los Muertos um, celebration at the cemetery on Halloween, and my dad is buried there. So uh, since I was working yesterday and could not make it, I had to honor my dad's hustle, but then today I went with my mom and my auntie to go sit and leave my dad some flowers and libations. So we are here off the high of Oya and the cemetery and the marketplace and the place of exchange of souls. And, you know, that's the Ashe of today, which is All Saints Day in the Catholic tradition. I was raised Episcopalian, which we call Catholic light. <laughs> so uh, also celebrating this holiday, being with ancestors, being with relatives, descendants, any of those things today, chosen family are all important. Today, it seems like we're gonna get the passages deck, the deck of character. Oh, and a third one, oh, who is it? No, no. Oh, Onyx Tarot, okay. I haven't used the Onyx in a little bit. A black deck and two black and white decks. That's what is coming up for the energy. I didn't actually get any um, specific questions today. So we're just gonna jump right into the monthly read and then we're going to do the key card and um, and then I'll just talk about whatever random shit comes to me as, as per, per usual, you know how it works audience. So we're gonna start with Dust to Onyx. I'm getting, let's see. So the deck of characters is gonna be our key card deck and the Onyx and the Passages Oracle deck are gonna be our concern, opportunity and obstacle. Ooh, okay, something done. flipped out, flipped over and flipped out. Let's see, this one, thems, thems, wait a minute, thems. Okay, so one Onyx Tarot and two Passages. We'll see what the energy of November is bringing. All this Capricorn energy is a Capricorn rising. I'm 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 happy that Mercury and Venus are in Capricorn. As a Venus and Aquarius, I don't mind with the Capricorn rising for some reason that. And then I'm a Taurus Mars. Uh, wait, Mercury is my Pisces though. So I feel like I have enough Earth signs that I'm fine being in Earth sign territory, except Virgo season. Virgo season murders me every time. It's not fair, but I guess that's what mutable water and mutable earth do together. They make mud. <laughs> that's how I feel about it. All right, we got the Passages Oracle for the Concern and the Advantage Version. And then we have Onyx Tarot for our, um, our opportunity, our obstacle, which is more of our, is the most, I think it's the most so social card. I think of the concern card as the collective card. I think of the opportunity obstacle as the interaction card, whether individually or with groups or with certain bodies. And then I take the advantage version card, the personal card as an internal card. So we're gonna start with the concern, <laughs> which was I pulled earlier today, the passage oracle doesn't play. Connection. So, I wrote today, I pulled boundaries and connection and boundaries was the bottom of the deck yesterday after I finished working my clients. And the cards tend to do this. The bottom of the deck will always come up the next day or the day after just to be like, you saw me. Yeah, I, I was, I, you saw me. So connection was at the bottom of the deck yesterday, top of the deck today. And now it's our first card, our concern, connection. Not only because we're going into holiday season, but also because we are just at a time where that opportunity is sort of coming up more, right? Where people are getting their boosters, people are making their decisions, the friendships that were gonna fall apart have already begun falling apart <laughs> or will begin falling apart as well as the family connections around the topics that have kept us distanced 
Um, and at the same time, we're entering into uh, the cover of winter and the cover of night, which is an insular time and also a familial time. I mean, obviously bears, we talk, say bears hibernate, they're not sleeping the whole time, but what they are doing is laying up in the cave with their family <laughs> and saying, I'll see my friends, you know, later, I'll see you guys in increments. So it is a time of closing ranks, closing circles, slowing down socialization. And of course, if you're in the Southern hemisphere, is the opposite or can be even the opposite for you in the winter hemisphere. So today I wrote earlier about boundaries. You don't need to set boundaries. Well, actually the cart was viewers trying to show you some shit. Okay, so we see connection. We see the little, our little friend connection. And then we have boundaries. So I wrote, you don't need to set boundaries. You are a boundary. If people violate disrespect or trespass against you, you simply remove yourself. They don't need access to your energy but you do. So choose the connections that support you naturally by simply respecting you as a boundary and by protecting your borders just by being themselves as well. This is called intentional world building. So one, you know, just like we find friends, family members, colleagues, community people, neighbors and stuff. Um, and if we have the good fortune, lovers, who are just being themselves to the best of their ability as authentically and genuinely as possible. And we just find we have great compatibility with, um, we all have different spheres of strength in this. For some of us, this is family. For some of us, this is friends. For some of us, this is loved ones, intimate partners. For some of us, this is like spiritual community. For some of us, this is, this is us with ourselves or with our community or with our neighbors. But for the most part, um, we have this ability at this time to sort of bring in more intentional intimacy and intentional world building through our willingness to just show up as, as we are and allow people the authentic response of being able to hold space for that or not. Um, a lot of connection is appreciating both right timing and compatibility, in my opinion. And that's true of any kind of connection. I was saying this to myself uh, earlier because my siblings are sibling, right? Sibling-ing right now. <laughs> my siblings are sibling-ing and I'm the youngest and I'm, you know, what do they say? My name is Dinit and I'm not in it. That's how I feel about it. But like what I thought to myself is at some point in a good relationship, ideally you just get over yourself. Like that's the sign of a healthy relationship where you're just willing to go through that ego death and become a different version of yourself. That's what I mean by get over yourself. Like the, when we can't get along with people, it's because we're so attached to an identity that we associate with them or they associate with us or is associated with that connection. And when we're really able to transform in relationship, it's because we fall on our own sword. It's because we go down into a Phoenix moment. We died to the person that we were connected to as our identity before. And we grow, we become more, we become newer, fresher, whatever. We shed skins, but at some point you just gotta be willing to get over yourself. So with connection, that also means like, don't get in your own way. Like allow yourself to know what you need and also know what you want and make what, as much as what you want, what you need. <laughs> I had someone ask me in Wishes Confluence today, like oh, not today, on Halloween when I was working and doing my multidimensionality and time space workshop, they were like, what do you do? if your ancestors are like saying things to you in dreams that aren't really easy or, or fun and that you don't want to do. And I sat there for a minute and I was like, I just do it. I mean, I don't know. I mean, there's no, I, of course there are ways I can talk about like going about it, asking a mentor, having somebody in some sort of spiritual tradition give you some direction so that you're not alone. And that doesn't necessarily need to, need to be rituals. What a priestess of Oshun, who I've been seeing for 10 years as a, as a counsel, she won't even let me call her a teacher. She's like, I'm not really your teacher because she says I don't have one of those. But um, like Ifa is my teacher. But um, she once told me to pray for 30 days for someone who I loved and all that I needed to pray for actually she told me 15 days but 
what I needed to pray for them was that they had the kind of love that I wanted. And it, my prayers needed to be the prayer of what I wanted for them for 15 days. I was in a contention with this person, <laughs> but that was the remedy. And so I prayed for them for 15 days for the kinds of love that I would want for myself. And the intention there is that if even the person that you cannot come to terms with can find the kind of uplifting, supportive, sustainable, healthy, wholesome love that you want to find, then your love can't be far behind, motherfucker. Because if even your enemy or your most contentious love <laughs> is someone who can be loved authentically, then why wouldn't you be? Because in the best of all possible worlds, you're doing your best, struggling sometimes, oftentimes trying too hard to get to that place with that person yourself. And if you can't do it and somebody else can do it, that means that someone else can do it for you. So connection is really important in that sense. Now, that's a big November theme. I think by the end of November, a lot of us are going to be like, I'm glad I got rid of that, dodged bullets. And then other of us are going to be like, you know, that person is actually really significant to me and I just need to get over myself or I need to figure out how to, we can get over each other's selves together. Um, there's an amazing video I also put in my story of a cat <laughs> who is sitting on its fellow dog's dog bed. It's like a white cat, just being a cat, not giving any fucks. And the dog is looking at the bed like, how am I going to navigate this? And eventually it just decides to like sit on the bed the way it would sit, the least it could be sitting on the cat. And the cat was all like, why are you sitting on me? And the dog is like, it's my bed. And the cat grabs onto the tail for a moment and fights the situation. And then they just both lay down together because at the end of the day, the cat's like, I know this is your bed and I'm wrong. And the dog is just because you're wrong doesn't mean I should abuse you and like sit on your face. And so the dog has the decency to be a good companion, unconditionally loving, loyal and communal like dogs are. And the cat also got to lay. It barely had to move. It just had to like have a tail in its face. So they resolved their issues by being themselves. The cat didn't stop being the cat. The dog didn't stop being the dog. And somehow those motherfuckers could survive on the same bed. It was amazing. So our onyx card, our opportunity obstacle, our us in interaction with the collective, us in interaction with individuals is the coin. Which I love the Ace of Pentacles because of all the aces, which I always say to people in tarot, an ace is like having a boon in your pocket if you're playing the right game. Like if you're not playing poker and you're playing Scrabble, cards are meaningless. But when you're doing the work of the aces, which um, because of the way the A is, <laughs> the A is shaped, I always, for some reason, and because of the ace of spades, I think of it as hoeing, but like a hoe for a garden. So the ace is like, so if you're doing the work of hoeing, which is the ace work, and you dig it in, then as far as I'm concerned, the ace of pentacles, ace of coins is the ace that re actually requires the most labor. The ace of cups overflows, the ace of wand, like the ace of uh, swords comes out victorious. Uh, the ace of wands is excited and getting like jubilant, jubilative, but the ace of coins is like, I, put, I laid the groundwork. like sweat blood and tears in the earth that i put there and that's why that shit grew and it feels like a really a card of digging one's self in digging one's hands in so this is why at the end by the end of november we really know what actually we want to uh what kind of things we want to enrich where we want what kind of soil we want our hands to be in what kind of things we actually want to foster the growth of um and going into 2022 the year of the lovers um and the 222 alignment we're going into a time of uh proper regard right pairship so i mean even if we're in a three-way relationship right if it's like two parents and a child you can't but relate one-on-one -on -one. then there's a third dynamic but we have independent sense of each other so when i say pairing i don't necessarily mean that we're just in one type of relationship because this can happen with family and friends and all these things but meaning the one-to-one -one dynamic that we might think of as polarity binary dualistic 
So coming into this energy, this twin energy, we're now in a position where you'll see where the growth, it's just like I wrote in the thing. It's like where you're already respected as a boundary, where the borders of where you are and someone else's are not in constant tectonic plate earthquake crashing because there is a sympatheticness, a simpaticoness, a a just genuine regard. You know, there's certain people that you're like, if I have to argue with someone or disagree with someone, I would rather it be them because I even appreciate them through our arguments. Like that's what I want out of connection for people that even the negative is neutralized or made more positive by the just genuine affection and regard that's there before the ego, before, well, I should say before the negative ego, before judgment, because neutral ego is just like, I'm here appreciating my life. Yeah. So negative egos, I'm here, but it's a problem because this motherfucker won't do what I asked. And because of that, I can't have what I want. And then positive ego is I'm here. And even though people are tripping, I love them to pieces. So we're really getting into this place where we realize that it doesn't have to be a fight. Um, and that we can, if it is a fight, it can be an honest fight with agreed upon parameters and rules and understandings of the nature of the game. Um, and we're also getting into this, re- this area where we're recognizing that like good things can happen to us. People can improve and the quality of life can get better for everyone. If we're all just willing to be in agreement with right timing and just have a genuine regard for one another that doesn't allow us to violate one another as a standard of communication. Um, so ace of coins is that real, real reward. As far as I'm concerned, it's like ace of coins, if it were a totem or a foundation is base until you have that learning through osmosis, doing all your wand shit through osmosis, learning all your water shit and your, and your air shit through osmosis until you actually put that to work into a life that becomes a narrative and a world onto itself upon the earth, then it's thought, theory, desire, imagination. It's not until we get into the pentacles that it's actually tangibly proven stuff um, and tangibly regarded. Because I, what I love about the Ace of Points too is that, you know, Ace of Swords might just mean that you feel victorious. Even if you don't get the benefit of everybody else recognizing it doesn't matter because you're so resolved in your belief and in your understanding of your intellect. Ace of Cups is more in celebration with an else, you know, like something else is happening. I got that book deal, or I had that great performance, or we had that great date. It's very interactive in that sense. And then the Ace of Wands is, I kind of feel that more of an Ace of Reputations. It's like the chatter that happened from the last thing you did the way that people regard you. So it's not until we really get into the Ace of Pentacles that people are like watching the work happen. And it's a whole 4D situation where it doesn't actually, you don't even pay attention to the things that are not relevant (laughs) to the situation. And actually that's why the real regard comes from, right? With the individual connections, because you're like, all that stuff is negative ego. All that stuff is superfluous. All that stuff is superficial. All that stuff is water under the bridge. All that stuff is the past. All that shit is, our old selves, not our new selves. And it's basically being willing to wake up to your friends, your lovers, your family members, humanity every day and be willing to say, who are you today? Explain it to me again so I can have regard for you. Who are you again today? And that only really needs to come up when there is tension because when you're in positive synchronicity, you're just gonna keep that alignment rolling. It's not gonna be any questioning. You're just gonna be in it. So that's a very strong opportunity obstacle right there. That's like the shit that can last a lifetime if you build it right like a forever foundation it's gonna be a stone hinge it's gonna be a pyramid you know um but i have not yet turned over our advantage aversion so let's see what we're fucking with inside of ourselves (laughs) spirit's funny now um 
And the way that I take this, especially, of course, we can think of it like space between people. But what I think of it is having the space, spaciousness within yourself that you are actually just allowed to be present. Because when you have that spaciousness within yourself, it's not clouded and clogged with over intellectualizing and projection. You're just present to the moment, you know, it, when you're in alignment. And so there's nothing to think about. You're doing the thing that you would otherwise wish you were doing. So there's nothing to think about because you're doing the thing that you would be doing in the best of all possible worlds. Uh, this part is very much when I'm ever I'm in a situation of tension, I say to myself, if I were the version of myself that I most preferred to be in the version of this reality that I most preferred to be, how would I act or how would I react? And it's that space too. It's like giving yourself a moment to clear out and decide who you want to be in the moment going forward. And that's why Bashar, one of my mentors obviously says, um, they have no history. They have no memory. And so when I was talking to Bashar about it, I was like, so if you're not defined by your cho choices, if you're not defined by that choice I made and that choice I made and that choice I made in a referential way, then are you defined by, I choose this, I choose this, I choose this, I choose this. And Bashar was like, yes, that's how you create identity the way you choose in the moment, just because you're choosing from a memory doesn't mean you're not making a choice from right here. So it's not, we're not defined by choices to choices to choices. We're defined by choosing to choosing to choosing to choosing. So that space that you create when you're like, if I were the version of myself that I most prefer to be in this moment, how would I react? And then you think you got to be honest with yourself. Do you like being mad? <laughs> because if you don't, then the version of yourself that you most prefer to be would not have an angry response because unless you enjoy anger or unless you're authentically in your anger, when you, first of all, when you're authentically in your anger, you're just in it. So there's nothing to think about. You're, you're doing it. You're like reptar, motherfucker, don't come by me. Yar. And when you're over that though, if you, if you're stewing in any kind of feeling makes you feel like you're less able to be yourself, then it's not the version of yourself that you most prefer. So if the answer that you come to that makes you feel like you have to hold back, that's probably an answer from your ego. So the space here as an advantage of version within ourselves is the space to know, the space to be present and learn through osmosis. Like, okay, well, I think I desire this job, or I think I desire this person, or I think I desire to be in this place, but am I willing to spend my time there doing the enjoying, or is my enjoying just theoretical, and then I get to the place, and I'm somewhere else again, because that's a whole other kind of honesty that you have to have with yourself about the kind of space that you need to take, so now that we've done that, 